thank you, Jesus. We bless you once again for what you are doing. As the song says, my heart desires to know you. May our being here this evening, may we have a personal relationship with you. May we know you, that is our cry. May we know you tonight. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you that you may have your way. That you may have your way tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. God bless you so much. It's really wonderful yet again this evening to be found in the house of God. If you are joining us today, I will take this opportunity to welcome you. It has been long. And I pray that tonight we might fulfill the call and the commission as to the reason why we are here. God bless you so much. Our time has really gone and uh, we are not going to take much of the time. I just take this time to introduce what I'll be talking about in the next few days. Uh, in the next few days, it has been in my heart if we can talk about this topic of the old uh, stroke, the new covenant This is what we'll be talking about for the next few days. If suppose God grants us opportunity to talk about it. So I'll use this opportunity just to introduce it for us to know where are the direction that we will be taking. So God bless you so much if you're joining us through the YouTube, the Facebook, and also through the BBN TV. I hope that we are going to be blessed and also to those who are joining us live today god bless you so much very very fast i'll go with you to the book of hebrews and also to the book of jeremiah the book of hebrews chapter number 10 from verses 1 my bible says if you have your bible in a teaching way for us to get what we want to derive on Hebrews chapter number 10 from verses 1. My Bible says, The law is only a shadow of good things, of the good themselves, of good things that are coming, not realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifice repeated endlessly, year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. In the book of Jeremiah to draw where I got uh, what I want to talk about Jeremiah 31 from verses 31 mine says the time is coming declares the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah it will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. May God add blessings to the reading of his word. God bless you so much. Once again, we welcome you into this evening service. I believe that you will be blessed uh, at the end of this session. Where we have read in the Old Testament... There are two, two, there are two key words that I want to pick. That is the old and the new. The word covenant uh, is derived from uh, uh, the word covenant uh, is an institution or a, a, con, a, a constitution that is made by two parties that is uh, instituted either by an oath or it can be administered by an oath. That is the meaning of a covenant. If you go back to the Bible, we have got two covenants. That is the old covenant and the new covenant. The old testament, the word testament itself has the same meaning as a covenant. So the old testament, or rather the book of the old testament, 
it is a covenant it is a covenant that god is making it is a covenant that god is making with the people of the old or rather god is making his covenant with the prophet that is why it is called a testament a testament meaning a covenant the new testament also has the same meaning as a testament as a covenant meaning god making a new testament god making a new covenant with the new or rather with the new generation the reason why god is making this too the reason why god is bringing up the new testament is because uh, the book of hebrews chapter number nine the bible says somewhere there that if the old had no weakness there was no need for another so the reason why god is bringing up a new covenant is because of uh because of the weakness in the old testament uh or rather the old covenant the first covenant that is why god is bringing up the new covenant so the reason why we want to talk about under covenant there are, are things that we might want to introduce by that we will introduce one we will talk about we'll put our emphasis on one the law and also and also grace now when you are talking about the old testament it types and it it uh it emphasizes so much on the law and the new testament emphasizes so much on grace so by these two i believe that you know where we are going by do by those two i know that uh, you know where we are going the old testament is so focused on the law but now the new testament brings grace into limelight the old testament gives birth to the law but now the new testament gives birth through grace by that what i mean is this the old testament the minister of the old testament was moses or on this side the, the minister of the new testament here we know who he is christ jesus is the one that establishes the new testament because the bible says in the book of john chapter number one that the law came through moses but grace and truth came through who? through christ jesus meaning that moses was the minister of the law and grace christ jesus was the minister of grace so christ jesus was the one who gave birth to the new testament and moses was the one who gave birth to the old testament so these are the uh, these are the two things that we are going to emphasize on so much and i believe that by the end of this you will know where we are at as we are speaking if you go back to the book of jeremiah the bible says that the time is coming that uh declares the law that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel a time is coming that i will make a new testament not like the old testament the reason why god is bringing up this it was not intentional it was not in the mind of god to lead them uh, as i began i told you that this one produced this it was not in the mind of god for god to lead them through the law it was in the mind of god for god to lead them through grace but because of disobedience in the book of exodus in the book of exodus chapter number 19 if you have your time you can read it because of disobedience in the book of exodus chapter number 19 this is where law is representing grace under grace these people were given a, a moses as a prophet god led them god gave them a prophet that they were never qualified of god gave them a moses as, as the prophet under grace well, before grace came before the law came i'm sorry before the law came they were under grace they were given everything for free now what is grace grace is the unmerited favor what you don't qualify for what you don't deserve they did not deserve the masses of god they did not deserve god leading them by day and by night by day and by night god led them god was with them 
God gave them manna. God fed them when they were angry. God divided the Red Sea. God made them, uh, God gave them a way where there was no way. But in all these things, they are rejecting God in the book of Exodus. And they are telling God that now God, uh, we don't want, uh, we don't want the grace. We don't want the favor that you have been doing with us. Now give us the law. And in that instance, God is giving them the law, the law to lead them. Praise God. So this is the first mistake that these people are making. The first mistake that they are making is as a result of disobedience in the book of Exodus. Under disobedience, that is where uh, uh, the law is brought up. Under disobedience, even the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, chapter number two, in the book of Genesis, chapter number two or chapter number three, when man disobeyed God, remember, man, Adam, was given everything for free. Adam was not to till. Adam was not to die. Adam was not to be sick. But now, after sin came in, Adam, let's go back to the life of Adam in the book of Genesis, under grace, Adam was given everything for free. He could not, uh, he was not to, he was not to sweat to eat. If you read the book of Genesis, uh, before the curses, before the curses, uh, before the curses, in the book of Genesis, chapter number three, chapter number three, from verses, from verses ten, and he said, "I had you in a garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid." And he said. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. The Lord God said to the woman, What is this that, that, that thou hast done? Let me run very, very fast to uh let me run very, very fast to the curses that God gave to Adam. To Adam he said, verse 17, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cast is the ground because of you. Through pain, painful toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. All the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistle for you and you will eat. And you will eat and you will eat of the front of the plant of the fruit. By sweat of your, of your bow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. So, under grace, there was no death. Under grace, there was no death. Under grace, Adam was not to sweat. Under grace, Adam was not to sweat to eat. Adam was given everything. Adam was in control. But now, when Adam disobeyed, now we are finding... And now God is putting conditions to Adam. God is now cursing Adam and is sending Adam out of the garden of uh, out of the garden of Eden. Now, in each age and in every dispensation, to any dispensation that will disobey the word of God and rejected, that age went into captivity. Like Adam went into captivity because of disobedience. The children of Israel also went into captivity into the law because of disobedience. They disobeyed the word of God. They are telling God, they are telling Moses in the book of Exodus chapter number 19, chapter number 19 uh, from verses 10. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them. Consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and ready by third day. Because on the third day, I will come down on Mount Sinai. That one is verse 10. Now, if you read before that, you'll find why these people, now they want to see God. They want to meet God. Under grace, they disobeyed, uh, they disobeyed, or rather they rejected grace. And they took the law to represent what? To, rep uh, to, rep uh, to replace the grace of God. So any they rejected the grace, God brought in the law. Just the way I began by saying, Moses being a minister of the law, but now under the New Testament, Christ being the new, uh, Christ being the minister of grace. So these are the key things that we want to bring to, to your attention. The reason why God is giving them grace, 
because of the sin of disobedience the reason why god is establishing another new covenant because the old covenant could not perfect them the reason why god is bringing in the new testament or the new covenant because the old covenant could not perfect them there was a need for another for their perfection and for their justification the old could not this is why the bible says in the book of jeremiah the day come that i will establish another another for what in that that which the old could not do now the new will do it praise god in that which the old could not do the new could do it if we go back to the old and see the characteristic of the old how the old was what was happening the bible says that the old was a shadow of the new the old covenant was a shadow of the new covenant the old testament was a shadow of the new testament as the prophet of god always says that the old testament gave birth to the new uh the old or rather the uh, the new revealed was revealed in the old it was a shadow everything in the old were in types and in figure everything in the old testament were in types and were in figure revealed in the new testament so if you will permit me just to draw something like a table here uh, and i will call this one here the the new so for us to see it as we are going and this one let's call it the uh, the new uh, the old covenant the old covenant and this one here the new covenant for us to see the uh, the two similarities for us when we, we when we will be going deeper for us to see what was the weakness of this and why is god insisting on another while he uh, while he brought in while he brought in the old god is insisting of another new while there was still yet another the old meaning the old could not do what the new could do that is why god is insisting of the new there was weakness in the old that is why god is pointing out to what to the new in the new we are finding god promising the new in the book of jeremiah the old came through moses but now the new came through who? jesus christ praise god so the minister of the old was who just as we began was was moses he was the minister of the old testament this side the minister of the new testament was christ jesus now if you go back to the book of romans in the book of romans uh, let's begin with the book of uh second corinthians 3 3 to hurry up because of time the book of second corinthians chapter number three from verses three just to read something there as we are going chapter three from verses three mine says uh, from verses 3 from verses 3 mine says now you you show that you are a letter from christ the result of our ministry written not with ink but to the spirit of the living god not on not on tablets of stone but on tablets of human heart such confidence as this is 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 ours through christ before god not that not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves now just before i go on the old testament was written in what in tablets and in in stones praise god the old was written in tablets and in stones if you go to the book of jeremiah chapter 31 and let's see where the the new will be written i will put my law jeremiah from 30 uh, jeremiah from 31 from verses 33 the bible says this is a covenant that i will make with the house of israel after that this time declares the lord i will put my laws in their mind and write it where in their heart there the other side paul says that we are written and engraved where in the spirit written the laws of god the new covenant now engraved and written where in the heart or rather in our spirit now it is not like the way the way it was placed on the stones and in the tablets the new testament this side it is written in our spirit jeremiah says that it will be written in our heart 
Now this side it will be a uh, uh, God wrote it on the human on, on on the tablet and on the stones. But now Paul says this side that now the New Testament will be written where in in our what in our spirit. If you read, just let read read it again for us to grasp it in the book of Second Corinthians chapter number two uh, chapter number three from verses three from verses three the bible says written not with ink but with the spirit of the living god praise god so the new the old testament was written in tablets and in stones but now the new testament was written with the spirit of god inside our spirit praise god welcome sir was written in our spirit was not written the way it was given it was given when when it was given uh, in mount sinai it was given in form of tablets it was given in form of stone god gave it to moses moses being a minister but now this idea christ jesus is giving out uh, the new covenant inside our spirit meaning what the, the, the meaning that the new covenant not like the old now the new covenant is now with us this is what jeremiah says here uh, this is what jeremiah says here such confidence at uh, the other side jeremiah chapter 31 no longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying know the lord because they will all know him how will they know him they will know him because the law or rather because the new covenant is now part and parcel of them this is why nobody will remind you because now you are part and parcel of that covenant it is not like the old covenant that was in tablets and in stones the new covenant right now has been engraved in our spirit written in our heart it is not like the way it was it was hanged on the, on the neck the new covenant right now it is engraved it is not written by the human and writing it is not written by human but now the spirit of the living god has written uh, has written it inside our soul this is what the bible says now you are ambassador of christ jesus not written with ink but now written with what with what with the spirit of the living god this is what the, uh, this is what the bible says here under that we are finding that the old testament was earthly the old testament was earthly and fleshy the old testament was earthly and fleshy meaning what uh it was earthly and fleshy it was not like the new testament which was to be engraved which was to be part and parcel of us this one here this one here it was earthly i could come and do whatever i could do i could recite the law I could do this and this but now under the new covenant which was written uh, which was written by the spirit of god in our heart meaning under the new testament nobody will remind me of the law of god the law of god was part and parcel of me what god says what part was part and parcel of me it was living inside me not like the one from mount sinai which was on stones and tablets i could recite it on sabbath i could recite it on this day and leave it there but now the one that now god is giving it was now part and parcel of me it is now not fleshy it is now not earthly it is now it is i, I, I can say that i walked with this i walked with it i was part and parcel of what god says bona i could recite it under the old testament it could be recited it was earthly it could be carried from one place to another but now the new covenant it was written inside our spirit look at these two similarities this is why these are the weaknesses this is what the, the, the bible says that there was a need for another why was there a need for another there was this one here we could shed blood here come here go this one here we could shed blood the blood of the goats the blood of the bullocks the blood of the pigeon all these things were done in memorial but now they could not do what they could not wash away the sin all these things here were done under the old testament the shedding of the blood the circumcision the covenant all this the feast the keeping of the feast 
Here we kept the feast, the seven, the seven feast of the Lord. We all kept all this. But now all these were near could not perfect the nature of man. Then the Bible says there was a need for another. But praise God. There was a need for another because the blood of the bullocks, uh, the, the blood of the, uh, the, the blood of the bullocks, the feast which were done year by year, they could not perfect man. There was a need for another because of the weakness of the old. Yes, it was given under tremor. It was given in a way that even the beast could not come closer, closer to the mountain. But now there was a need for another because of its weakness. When I see if we go back and see and see where where the old was bathed at, where was it bathed at? It was given birth at Mount Mount Sinai. Praise God! It was given birth at Mount Sinai. This one here was given birth at where? At Mount Calvary. Mount Calvary. If you read the book of Hebrews chapter number twelve from verses twenty four, the Bible calls Calvary. As, as our Mount Zion. As our Mount Zion. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews chapter number 12 from verses 24. Before, before we wind up because the servant of God is here. Hebrews 12 24. Mine says Hebrews 24 Hebrews 24 12 24 Sorry. Hebrews 12 of 24. Mine says here. Twenty-two. Mm, thank you. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to a thousand, you have come to thousand upon a thousand of angels in joyful assembly. Assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirit of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the to the sprinkled blood that speaketh better than the blood of Abel. Sorry for that. Now look at this. It is not like Mount Sinai. Under Mount Sinai, even the beast could not come close. But here the Bible says here, now you have come to the assembly. Now you have come to the new Jerusalem, our Mount Zion. Now where have you come? Under Mount Calvary. The other side, nobody could approach Sinai. When the law was being conceived, nobody could approach um, um, Mount Sinai. When God was giving birth to the old uh, to the old covenant, nobody could approach it. But here, this side, now we have come. Praise God! Now we have come. Why have we come? We have come because not of the blood of the bullocks, not of the feast. They could perform the feast here, come here, go. But now there was still there was a need for another. There was still a need for another new covenant. There was still a need. They could shed the blood. They could do all the feast of the Lord. They could keep the feast in remembrance. But now the Bible says there was still a need for another. Because the first, because of the weakness of the first one. They did all this. They did all this. Why did the blood of the bulls fail? Even right now, I've never had anywhere where there is an exchange a goat can donate blood. This is why a goat and a bull does not have does not have a conscience to give out blood. But now look at what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. The, 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 the blood of the goats, the blood of the bullocks could not donate blood for humans. Yes, they can, but now they have got no conscience. They do not have a soul to represent or rather to replace to replace the sinful nature of a man. This is why there was a need for a another under the old the blood could cover under the old the feast were done in memorial at the appointed time when god came down on mount sinai under the appointed time when christ came down on mount sinai not to give out the law or rather not to give out another or rather not to provide another feast because all this feast pointed to him all this feast talked about Christ Jesus.
answers. Praise God. So all these things were done in shadows. All these things were done in figures and in types. That at the appointed time when Christ will come. At the appointed time when he came, now there was no need for blood. When Jesus came, the minister of the new test, uh, the minister of the new covenant, when he came, there was no need for the blood of the bullocks. When Jesus came, the minister of the new covenant, there was no need for the feast. The feast, the Bible says, what times were shadow of him in reality. Praise God. All these things were done because at the old typed him. They were all shadows. At the appointed time when the image came, at the appointed time when the real image came of the blood that they were shedding, now there was no need for the goats. Now there was no need for the bulls. Now there was no need for the feast. They could celebrate all the feast. The feast of the, the, feast of the living bread. The feast of the Pentecost. The feast of this and this. But now it could not perfect Paul says there was still need for another. Praise God. Paul says there was still need for another new one. In that what the old could not do, now the new could now perfect it. What the blood of the bullocks could not do, what the tablets could not do, they hold on, on to the tablets. They could carry the tablets. They could recite the law. But now the law could not perfect them. Praise God. The law could not perfect them. Let's go back and see the characteristics of what the law is. Let's go back and see what are the characteristics and why could the law uh, why could the law a perfect man? Look at what Jesus says in the book of in the book of Matthew 5:48 if I'm not wrong. The book of Matthew 5:48 the book of Matthew 5.48, mine says here. Mine says here. Be perfect therefore, as your father in heaven is perfect. Now, when God gave the law, meaning that the law was perfect. Psalms 19 from verse 7. Psalms 19, and let's see how the law was made perfect. The book of Psalms chapter number 19, there is someone that talks about uh, Psalms 19 from verse, the Bible says, says Psalms 19, 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The, state, the status of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise, making wise the temple. Now look at this. The law of the Lord is perfect. Number one, the law was what? Perfect. The law was perfect. There was no man on earth, not even an high priest, that could keep the whole law. There was no man on earth that could, uh, that could keep the whole law. There was nobody. This is why Paul says there was a need for another. There was, there was no man because itself, the law itself, it was perfect. There was nobody who could keep them the way God gave them on Mount Sinai. Yes, they could recite them. But yes, uh, yes they, they could recite them. But there was nobody who could keep them. This is why there was a need for another. So when Christ came, when God came, when God came, him being perfect. Look at what he says in the book in the book of Matthew 5.48. That now uh, that be perfect as my father is perfect. Christ being God, he came to give out his perfection to the church. In that if the church have Christ, now they are perfect. Why are they perfect? They are perfect because the soul that was in Christ Jesus now is living in them. Praise God. Now they are perfect because they have been made perfect with God. God has perfected them. And where did God perfect them? He perfected on the cross of Calvary when he died. That is where he perfected them. The Bible says, be perfect as my father is perfect. The law was perfect. There was no man that could keep the law. Look at what he says down there. Uh, the status of the Lord are trustworthy. Making wise, uh, making wise the temple. Uh, in verse 7 verse 1. The law of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul. That's what I was looking for. The law revived the soul of man. 
how did it revive the soul of man it revived the, the, the soul of man to have what was the idea of sin it revived that it revived the soul of man to know what sin was before before the law came man had got no idea what sin was man did not know what sin was the, the paul says that before the law there was sin but it was not imputed because they they were not sin conscious but now when sin came now they were sin conscious they knew what sin was why did they know it they knew it because of what because of law they knew what sin was because of law like a doctor i can i can give an example with you my brother here uh yes you might fall sick that is a characteristic because we are human now when you go to a doctor the doctor will examine you looking at your symptoms maybe you're diarrhea maybe you're having some some some, some, some headache now he will tell you according to what you're going through you are suffering from malaria you did not know because you do not know the way to examination now the doctor is bringing to attention the name malaria praise god that is what the law did the law brought to us the idea of what sin was before sin they could steal before sin before the law they could do everything but now it was not imputed it was not imputed why was it imputed because they were under grace they were forgiven of all their iniquities but now after the book of exodus 19 now their eyes are open the way the eyes of adam was open in the book of genesis to know what sin was after eating after eating the forbidden fruits praise god they knew what sin was in exodus 19 the way adam his eyes was open to know what sin was after eating the apple after adam eating the apple adam his eyes were open or i can say he was revived to sin now this idea we are revived to sin the moment the law stepped in the bible here says the bible says the law of the lord is perfect reviving the soul reviving the soul where reviving the soul to know what sin was praise god reviving to uh, reviving the soul to know what sin was praise god now look at another characteristic of the law the law was like a policeman the law was like a policeman. The law could arrest you. Now we have known. Now you have known what sin is. Now you have known that you are malaria. Now the law have told you that you are malaria. Now look at what the law could do. The law, now you are malaria. Now the law could arrest you. Because now you are full what? You are full sick. You are fallen sick because of what? Because of sin. Now you are malaria. The law now could arrest you. It was like a policeman that will that could imprison you that will imprison imprison you that will imprison you the law will imprison you but now the law did not have the hands to take you out of uh, out of prison it could only condemn it could only accuse it could only say that brother jimmy is this and this but now it had got no forgiving power now this side i'll bring it here that now the old testament or the old covenant the bible say the book of romans if you will read it it was a ministry of condemnation the old covenant was a ministry of condemnation this side the new covenant was a ministry of mercy praise god the old covenant under the law could accuse you brother jimmy you have been found a sinner but now the new testament the new covenant was a ministry of mercy the bible says not like the blood of abel that cries man man the blood of jesus speaketh mercy before the throne of god the blood of jesus calls for mercy not like the ministry of the law that could imprison you you have been taken captive you have been found drinking now you will be arrested you'll be arrested for what because 
because now you have done what you have done what you, you, you have sinned you have drunk now you will be in prison you will be condemned now this side yes you have been condemned but now look at what mercy says in the book of romans 8 now there is now no condemnation for them that are in christ jesus the new testament this side they were accused you have been found a murderer you have been found a thief that the law was speaking but now the appointed time when the new came the new did not accuse the new blotted away every mistake and it gave man a good name in christ jesus now no condemnation for them that are in christ jesus the new covenant praise god there was a need for another the bible says with all this there was a need for another when the old was speaking when the old was speaking when the old was speaking vengeance let's go back to the life of moses how many know that moses was a murderer moses was a murderer if you go back to the book of exodus he was a of killing now if you go back to the book of hebrews chapter number 11 and let's see what god is saying about moses putting into consideration that he was a murderer the book of the book of hebrews chapter number 11 the book of hebrews chapter number 11 from verses from verses 28 by faith moses when he had grown up refused to be known as a son of pharaoh he chose to be uh, he chose to be ministered uh, he chose to be uh, to be ministered uh, to be mistreated along with the people of god rather than to enjoy the pleasure for the sake of christ as of greater value than the treasures of egypt because the value because he valued the treasures of egypt no that is not what, what i'm reading 24 yes 26 he regarded 26 he regarded he regarded this uh, he regarded this grace for the sake of christ as of greater value than the treasures of egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward by faith he left egypt not fearing the king's anger he persevered because he saw him who is invincible now look at this one thing i wanted to get from that moses was not condemned under the new under the old he was known as a murderer under the old he was a killer look at the ten commandments do not kill but now under the new under the new testament under the new covenant the sins of moses has been blotted away the sins of moses are now not counted the sins of moses are now not regarded here the bible says by faith moses disregarded the pleasures in egypt and regarded the treasures in christ jesus the bible does not call him a murderer why because the old accused him he was a murderer under the law moses was a murderer but now under new moses being what being a servant of christ jesus his mistakes are not seen why because the new was speaking mercy praise god the new was not talking condemnation the new was not condemning the new the new was not reporting or rather the new where i was speaking mercy for moses like right now if i may ask here how many here before they knew christ jesus they were sinners how many how many here we were all sinners we were not worthy like my brother according to a testimony he was the worst gang ever known but now under christ jesus we are not looking at what you did we are now looking at what christ jesus is doing in you we are not looking at how many people suffered at your name we are now looking at what god is doing in your life because you are not under the old you are under the new and under the new the bible says now there is now no condemnation now nobody can judge you because you are sins christ took them two thousand years ago now you are a new creature moses also was a new creature when he met christ jesus not under the law under the law now let's go back this one here ministry of condemnation this one here ministry of mercy now if you can just write it somewhere the old was a ministry that kept revenge it it had 
had the uh, it had the record of falls. It kept a record of past mistakes. The way it kept for Moses, and the way it kept for another man, it kept for Moses. It kept for all these men. But now under the new, the old is gone. The new has come. Praise God. The old is gone. The new has come. The old is gone in where? The old is gone in the law. But now the new has come in Christ Jesus. The old condemnation is gone. But now the new has come in Christ Jesus. Nobody could afflict you. But now when Jesus came, now you are perfect as he is perfect. Now you are perfect as God is perfect. So are you perfect. This is why nobody can remind me of what I did. Because my history, Jesus blotted it on the cross of Calvary. Now I'm a son. Now I'm a daughter. Now I'm a child of God. I'm living the way my father dictates. The new has come. Praise God. The new has come. The new has come. In the old, we were living in a shadow of the light. But now when the light came, why will you live in a shadow and the light is there? The shadow of the blood. The shadow of the, oh, 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 the, the, shadow of the tablet. The shadow of Moses. But when reality came, why will you live in a shadow when there is reality? Under the old, they could keep a memorial of the old scene. What my sister did, you did this in the year 1990, you did in the year 2020, they are keeping those records. But now look at what Jesus did. The Bible says he blotted away the past ordinances. Under the law, what you did in the year 1920, or in the year 2020, the records are there. But now under the new, the records are no more. The Bible says, now go you into the holies of holies. Why are you going? Because you are now perfect under the old there was only one man who could go into the holies of holies under the old there was only one man whose prayer was accepted but now under new all of us as priests and we are high priests under the new under the old it was only the high priest who could pray it was only the high priest who was permitted to go into the holies of holies but now under the new we are now being made priest and high priest you are now being made a prophet and a minister of the gospel which you are not worthy before but now under the new you are now a priest of your own house praise god you are now a priest under the, uh, under the old, it was only an high priest who could walk into the holies of holies, not with the blood, not, uh, not without blood, for himself and for the blood of the people. But now look at what Christ Jesus did. When he went into the holies of holies, he went for the, uh, he went, uh, he did not carry the blood of the bullocks, but he carried his own blood into the holies of holies. Under the, the old, they carried blood. There was need for the bulls and for the goats. That one was under the old. But under the new, there was no need for the blood anymore. There was no need for the feast anymore. Because the feast has been fulfilled in who? In Jesus Christ. The feast of the living. The feast of the jubilee. He was the one. Now when he came, there is no need for the goats. There is no need for the bulls. There is no need for the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. He was a minister of the law. If you read the book of Luke, if you read the book of Luke, chapter number 10, from verses, and let's see how he fulfilled the law. Before we finish, as the servant of God is coming in, the book of Luke, chapter number 10, from verses 25, Luke 10, the Bible says, then, then it goes and take seven and not there. Ten from verses twenty-five. On the occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, How do you read it? So Jesus did not disobey the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. He was a minister 
of the law he could not come contrary to the law if he could have come against the law then he could have contradicted the idea of god the idea of god is one that the whole bible is the word of god and if he contradict even one the bible says and for this the scripture is fulfilled he could have not fulfilled the scripture if he could have rejected the law this is why he had to come as a minister of the law he ministered unto the law he spoke of the law he ministered unto the law the bible says here look the way he look the way he approached this man in verses 25 the bible says it has gone away again luke 10 25 it says mine says here what must i do to inherit eternal life 26 what is written in the law he did not disobey the law but he pointed this man where back to the law he pointed him where back to the law he replied how do you read it he answered love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul with all your strength with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself you have answered correctly jesus replied according to what according to the law he returned the man where to the law meaning jesus was both a minister of the new and the old test and the and the old and the new covenant he was both a minister of the old he came to fulfill what moses spoke about him he came to fulfill what the prophet spoke about him let me repeat he came to fulfill what moses and the prophet according to the book of luke he came to fulfill what the prophet spoke about him in the law in the law what they spoke about him he came to fulfill it he came to fulfill what the old bible is is pointing to he did not come to bring another he came he was a minister he came under the law the bible is in the book of galatians chapter number four from verses four galatians four four mine says here mine says here but on the time had fully come god sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem them under the law praise god he was born under what under the law he came under the law for what purpose to redeem them those who are in the law to redeem those who are in the law this is why my brother my sister i disagree with anybody who is returning you back to the blood who is returning you back to the feast that you must feed uh, you must keep the soul and so feast that one is a lie the feast that uh, the, the feast that the Lord speak about this feast pointed to christ jesus the new covenant the bible says that the time is coming that i will put my laws in their heart in their spirit in their heart in their spirit the new covenant so we are not now under the law we are now under christ jesus he came as the law he came as a minister under the law but why did he come he came to fulfill what the scripture he came to fulfill what the scripture pertains to himself he came to fulfill what the bible talked about him in the law in the law the bible says in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 from verses 18 let's go back and see what the law said about him what the law said about jesus as and, and let's see how he related with the law the book of deuteronomy 18 from verses 18 the book of Deuteronomy 18 18. Very, very fast. Mine here says 18 18. Then says here, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. Now, that one God is telling Moses, I will raise them a prophet like an unto you. Moses represented the law. Now yet the Bible says, I will raise them a prophet like an unto you, Moses, the law. Let's go back and see. Verses, uh, I will raise like a prophet from among the brother. I will put my words in his mouth. I will put my words in his mouth. And he will tell them everything that I command. Verses 15. Verses 15, the Bible says, 15 the bible says the same chapter the lord your god will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brethren you must listen to him so jesus came came 
uh, came under the law the way the bible is in the book of galatians he came he was brought up under the law and why did he uh, and why did he come uh, uh, up, uh, under the law he came under the law to fulfill what to fulfill the scripture that pertains to him he came and he fulfilled every scripture that pertains to him so this is what the old and the new there was need for another there was need for another in the new testament in the new covenant under the old they could shed blood but this blood they were being done in shadows and in types it could it was not like the blood of jesus that did jesus shed on the cross of calvary under this blood this blood were done year by year but this blood could not perfect any man at the appointed time the bible says that i will raise them up a prophet that i will bring another covenant now what was that covenant that covenant was in Christ Jesus it was not like the old that Moses could do could recite here come here go with the high priest and all the prophets they could recite it but man was still a sinner but man was still a sinner he was still a sinner under the law because the law only covered sin the law was like God's mirror the, the law was like God's mirror that the law was like God's mirror to open up to the church the church was a sinner but now at the, at the appointed time when jesus came he did not come not only as a mirror he came as a point of perfection he perfected the church in that the weakness of the law jesus perfected them to the church this is why my brother we are not under the law but we are under the new because jesus has already manifested everything that was spoken about him he has so fulfilled them when he was born and when he died on the cross of calvary when he died he finished the work what the law could not finish jesus christ when he died on the cross of calvary he finished the work that the bible says he entered into the holy of holies he became a mediator between man and god he became a way for man and god before him there was no way when jesus came he became the way that man can use to god this is why today he is not the blood of the bullocks it is the blood of jesus that you can use today in the blood of the goats the blood of the goats could not do it the angels could not do it at the appointed time when jesus came at the appointed time when the blood was shed when the blood of the goats were crying after vengeance the blood of the bullocks were crying after vengeance but the blood of jesus what well, the blood of the goats could not do the blood of the goats could only hide at the appointed time when god came at the appointed time when jesus came he did not cover but he blotted he blotted away every past and writing he blotted away every mistake that the bible says you are now a new creature how are you a new creature you are a new creature because you are in jesus in jesus you have taken the nature of god praise god in jesus we have taken the perfect nature of god now we are perfect how are we perfect we are perfect because of the blood of jesus that speaketh better for us not the blood of jesus that speaketh mercy not like the blood of abel that cries here come here go oh my brother oh my sister they killed me and left me but the blood of jesus is speaking mercy the blood of jesus is speaking grace the blood of jesus is speaking hope and restoration this way my brother my sister i don't care where you have been found tonight we are under the new covenant and under the new covenant not like the, the old under the old we were condemned in the new now we are perfected in the blood of jesus we are perfected in the blood of jesus this is why we are made like god that the bible says now no man can toast you to and fro why because now you are a son and a daughter 
you are not now under the elementary school. Under the elementary school, you must be guided. But now when you left the elementary school, now you are in the new. Now you have come into the reality. Now you've come into the reality. Jesus Christ, being Lord, is a minister of the world. Praise God. Is a minister of the world. Is a minister of the all is a minister of the new covenant. Not ministered without blood. The way the other side, it was given with blood. So they knew also uh, there was a ne ne necessity for the blood. This the Bible says, now we are a new creature. Now we are a new generation because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. I don't know where you are today, my brother, my sister. I don't know where you are, where you're joining us from. But this is just to remind you, the old is gone. The Bible says the old was a shadow of the new covenant. The old was a type. The old was a type of reality. The law was a type of grace. Mercy, condemnation was a type of mercy. What condemnation did under the old, the mercy perfected it. Now we are not under the ministry of condemnation. We are under the ministry of reality in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now we are bold because now we are made like high priest. We are made like the priest themselves. That what the law could not do. Now we have gone into the holies of holies to do what the priest could do. To do what the high priest could do. To do what the prophet could only do once in a year. Praise God. Our sins are normal. And that is the message for today. Just want you to rise up wherever you are. As we want to usher in the servant of God. I don't know how you want to talk to him very, very shortly. Just rise up wherever you are. And I want you to open your mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. Precious mighty God. Thank you for the blood in the new covenant. Thank you God for taking away the old. Now we are under the perfect. We are under the perfect blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. We are under the new. Not the old which spoke. It spoke of condemnation. It spoke of our guilt. But at the appointed time when Jesus came. Now we have been made equal. Now we are made sons and daughters. We bless you. Just open your mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is why we are here for prayers. Because the blood of Jesus is alive in our life. The blood of Jesus, not like the blood of Abel, the blood of Jesus, the powerful blood of Jesus has blotted away. The blood of Jesus has blotted away. The blood of Jesus has cancelled. The blood of Jesus has did away, has done away with every mistake, with every error, with every lifestyle. The blood of Jesus, not the blood of the bullocks. It is the blood of Jesus. This is our confidence today as we walk into the holies of holies. This is our confidence, our hope today as we march up into the holies of holies and we demand for our healing. We demand for our restoration. We demand for our restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. And the devil has got no power because we are in the holies of holies. In the holies of holies. We are in the holies of holies. We are in the holies of holies. We are in the holies of holies not in the outer core we are in the holies of holies we are in the holies of holies where the blood of jesus is speaking grace and mercy where the blood of jesus is speaking grace and mercy not that the blood of the pools not the blood of the pools the blood of jesus the blood of jesus the blood of god the blood of god god in the god in the god in the flesh dying on the cross of god we are made like him. We are made like God through his blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. This is why we are sons and daughters. We are sons to partake of. We are sons to partake of in the image of God, in the likeness of God. We are sons in the image of God. And if we are sons, whatsoever we permit, whatsoever we reject in the name of Jesus, whatsoever we reject in the name of Jesus, we reject it in prayer. The devil has got no power in your life today. We reject it. Every unwriting. We reject it. Every lifestyle. We reject it. 
every delay we reject it every delay every stagnation financial delay we reject it every delay we reject it today by the authority in the holy symbolic by the authority by the power that whatsoever we permit here whatsoever we permit here satana we command you in the name of jesus we command you in the name of jesus we command you in the name of jesus back of now back of today back of today in the name of jesus 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 this is why we are here we are here our god in the holy of holies whatsoever we permit god permits it whatsoever we reject the healing that we pray for whatsoever we permit we permit it tonight we permit it tonight we permit it tonight the revival in the city in the name of jesus whatsoever we permit we permit it in the prayer the devil has got no authority the devil has got no power to stand against the will of god it must be achieved it must be achieved in the name of jesus it must be achieved it must be fulfilled in the name of jesus whatsoever we permit whatsoever we reject we reject we reject we reject god reject it tonight in the name of jesus tonight in the name of jesus tonight in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus we reject it tonight we have a reason to be here we have a reason to be here we have a reason this is why we are sons and daughters this is why we are sons and daughters just move in prayer wherever you are this is why you came here this is why you are here just move in prayer wherever you are in the time to reject this is a time to accept in the mighty name of jesus we a time that you can declare you can declare war with the kingdom of darkness this is the time that you can take a miracle you can take a miracle you can take a miracle in the name of jesus you can take a testimony in the name of jesus you can take a testimony in the name of jesus tonight of god tonight of god we permit it we permit it we permit it in the name of jesus we permit it tonight under the revelation of the will of god we are in the holy of holies we permit it in the name of jesus just pray wherever you are this is why we are here yes lord the devil has got no authority we are made like him and if we are made like him we have the very authority we have the very power we have the very authority that jesus gave to the church in the mighty name of jesus 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 for the glory receive we bless you tonight for what you are doing we thank you master 
receive all the glory receive all the adoration thank you for each and every son and daughter who is present in this meeting may none to leave this place as he or she came take all the glory in Jesus mighty name yes say amen wherever you are God bless you so much you can just rise up wherever you are as we want to worship God as the servant of God is taking the podium. So, we want to worship God. Wherever you are there, don't, uh, don't take, rather don't change the channel because there is more in store. God bless you so much for being part and parcel of this ministry. Suppose you might want to offer the pay bill, the till number uh, on your screen. You can just do so as we are winding up god bless you so much as you are giving in jesus mighty name once again god bless you so much till we meet tomorrow from 5 p.m god bless you so much Ah uh-huh.